Hi, my name is Robin Bremer and you're watching Walks with God and today we're continuing on our series on uh, bringing revival to your town, church, community, to America in particular and I'm sharing with you from my book Feed My People Joy, Kingdom Living for End Times and today we're going to talk on healing is always the kingdom way. Now this whole book is about the joy of the Lord, Feed My People Joy because God says when the, the kingdom of God is about righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And everything about God is good. Everything about God is joy. Um, when you understand that He wants you healthy, He wants you prosperous, He wants you wise, He wants you protected, He wants you walking in power, authority, and dominion, um, you're going to see and have an understanding that's going to give you a joy. And that joy, nothing can take away from you because you're going to know that God is good. And He always has good thoughts for you and always has good for you. And the more you begin to understand the kingdom, that it's power, authority, and dominion in you to enforce God's will on earth as it is in heaven, and you begin to see and understand that the more power, authority, dominion, and joy, and peace, and righteousness, and the Holy Spirit's presence and power you're going to walk in. And that's what this whole series is about, and that's what I'm sharing. And, and as you walk in that and begin to bring it into your life and people's lives around you, and spent time in prayer and intercession and doing that, you will be bringing revival to your community, to your area, to your country. Um, so today, this is a very, very important chapter. It's chapter 14 in my book, and it's Healing is Always the Kingdom Way. And I want to quickly share with you an app that my husband is doing in the Android market right now that he's working on. Um, it's a Bible program, a daily Bible program, but it also has all uh, my different chapters of the book in it but it in, in particularly has it, each chapter is a little booklet that you can take out in the street and use as a tool but this one particular booklet uh, healing it started out as a little booklet and you can take it um, print it out from this Android or uh, from my website and take it to the hospital and minister but the program he's working with you'll be able to just look on your telephone and you'll have my little booklet in your telephone while you're in the hospital and be able to minister specific prayers and uh, overcome certain objectives and know how to pray for people in the hospital. So it's a really cool tool he's making. So these are the three things I want you to remember about healing. Uh, number one, God is not the author of sickness or disease. And that's Acts 10.38. God is the author of health. 1 Peter 2.24, and Satan is the author of all sickness and all disease, John 10.10. 10. Now, the dividing line in the Bible is um, John 10.10. 10. It says, I have, uh, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, and I have come to give you abundant life. Jesus prayed, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom of God is within us in power, and that's the king's dominion to enforce God's will on earth as it is in heaven. So you ask yourself this question, is there sickness, disease, poverty, lack, fear in heaven? No. So you don't allow it here on earth. Now, there's lots of things that you need to overcome. Um, lots of questions. It took me years to overcome these issues because I was raised in a religious church. I was, I didn't actually wasn't even raised in church. I went to a Lutheran church and was cat, had, had catechism class. I never knew anything about a personal relationship with Jesus. I just knew about rules. Now, I, I don't know. That was a kid at 12. So don't say that I'm saying that's the way it is because I don't know that's the way as a 12 year old I saw it. But <clears throat> I always thought like most people do that God uses sickness, sickness and disease to teach us, humble us, get glory, um, to, um, Teach, humble, get glory. Um, I don't know, just all those different stuff. But we're going to go over that in here. Um, Jesus always used his godly powers to heal people, and he never said no. I, and by his godly powers, I mean is the anointing of the Holy Spirit, because Jesus put aside all his godly attributes and became as man in sinful, in, in, as sinful man. Uh, but he did not sin. So everything Jesus did, we can do because Jesus is part of us. He is the head and we are the body. Uh, the Holy Spirit lives in us, the same spirit that raised him from the dead. Jesus came to earth and lived on the earth as a man, anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. 
and he needed to be anointed with the Holy Spirit and power because the Holy Spirit is God and he needed to have that so that he could do the same thing that we can do now because the word says as he is so are we in this world um, so let's go over the healing part <clears throat> Jesus uh, heals and his disciples heal and we heal um, I always like to refer to and you can remember this very easy Luke 9-11 like our event that happened in 9-11 well, Luke was a physician, so if you always refer people to Luke 9-11 <clears throat> when you're ministering in the hospital or out in the street, um, he healed all those who had need of healing. He never said no. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, uh, 1 Peter 2.24 says, He bore our sins on his own body, that we having died to sin would live to righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Uh, you were healed so it's already a done deal he's already given us everything we need for life and godliness we just need to receive it now that's in first Peter uh, if, there's many scriptures in my book that I don't even want to go over here that talks about healing read Matthew Mark Luke and John all the healings and miracles that he did um, what I want to show you here is that Jesus was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power he came to earth as a man not as a as God James 1.13 says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted by evil. Okay, just pay attention to these next couple of scriptures, and I'll explain to you why. Luke 4, 2 and 13 says, being, Then Jesus, being in the desert 40 days, he was tempted of the devil. And the scripture right before that says that God cannot be tempted. So if Jesus was tempted, God on the earth doing everything he did as God then he couldn't have been tempted but because he was tempted it had to be a legal it had to be a normal temptation um, for what man can be tempted it had to be a temptation in order for him to have the opportunity to sin but choose not to sin so he could carry our, our sin on him Hebrews 4:15 says Jesus was in all points tempted as we are Romans 8 3 says God sent his only son in the likeness of sinful flesh okay so right there that shows uh, let's read this other one here Acts 10 38 God anointed him Jesus God anointed him Jesus with the Holy Spirit and power and went about doing good okay if if God if Jesus came to earth as God and operated as God then why would God need more God because the Holy Spirit is God why would God need more spirit? Uh, but he didn't. He came as man and put aside all his godly attributes. Uh, and it says, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Who were they oppressed by? The devil. Healing, healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Not who were oppressed by God, but oppressed by the devil. Okay? For God was with God. If God was with God, why did God have to be with God? God was with him. God was with Jesus. Uh, because Jesus came as a man, not as God. And that's really important for you to understand. <clears throat> and then Jesus said on John 20, 21, Peace I give, I give to you as the Father gives me. Receive the Holy Spirit. Um, and when you go into all the world, these signs will follow you. In Mark 16, 5 and 8, you'll heal, heal the sick, cast out demons in my name, and so on. Uh, and Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he lives inside of you through the representation of the Holy Spirit, and he still heals people today. There is not a time that said, oop, I'm sorry, your mom has to die of cancer tomorrow, because as of today, 2 o'clock, Jesus no longer heals. It was only for the disciples. The last disciple died at 2 o'clock, so everybody after that, uh, too bad, die, get, be sick. No, that's not the way it was. Uh, healing is forever. Healing isn't just for a time. It wasn't just for the disciples. Uh, I heal people today through the Holy Spirit, and there's many others. Uh, it's still happening. It is not something that was temporary. Um, healing is always provi has always been provided. Uh, it just has to be received. You can receive it. Uh, you have to receive it by faith, not feelings. You can lay your hands on people as a point of contact for them.